Let me ask you about the essay, The Imposter Fantasy. So Mm -hmm. you get into the internet as facilitating this kind of decoupling of body reality and the projected self, you know, this idea of be whoever you want to be um, in 2022. And, you know, in the early 2000s, I was a researcher, I was researching online spaces. And this was the early 2000s, 2005, 2007, um, through the mid mid part of the the century there, the the decade there. Um, This was before social media platforms really, you know, um, had really taken off. And role play was um, was just part of it. You know, it's always been a big part of online culture. So you fast forward to 2022. Do you think this ideology uh, could have taken root in reality, right? Because it's in reality. If the internet had not existed or had evolved differently? Kind of complex question, but. Well, um, I don't know how else the internet could have evolved. Um, But yes, I absolutely think that without internet, we would not be here um, with regards to this problem. Um, I think internet has played several different roles in in making this happen. It it has led to mainstreaming of pornography, which is implicated in men um, self-identifying as women. They often credit sissy porn and whatever. We're discovering that they were really women, whatever. Um, And also um, young girls are finding growing up in, in a very objectifying society where they're also um, exposed to this hookup culture and, you know, becoming a woman is, is more stressful, more dangerous than it has been, you know, when I was young. But internet has also, I think people have always fantasized about being someone else. That's not uncommon, mm. but internet has, uh, dissoci- it's decoupled us from interactions in real life. And I think you can see that people interact online a lot more or, or, or significant proportion of their interaction is online now, whereas in the past, it just wasn't an option. So now people are able to filter themselves and their opinions and their personas through filtered photographs, avatars, written rather than um, um, verbal communication. And in normally humans get a lot of their cues from body language and we are basically used to being in the same room with one each other with each other if we're going to speak or speaking one-on-one over the phone this visual component of make-believe and you know increasingly increasingly sophisticated games where uh, people who identify as the opposite sex particularly men can assume these female personas and um I think our brains are not necessarily that well equipped to tell the difference anymore, especially when this um, graphics and real life interaction in in real time is is coupled together. So I think also it's easier for people to just believe someone when they claim, when a man claims to be a woman, it's easier to believe that if he's sitting behind an anime avatar or, you know, heavily photoshopped picture, as opposed to sitting next to a four foot, uh, six foot four man um, looking pretty sketchy, claiming that he's a woman. There is an absolute awareness immediately in real life of issues that you might not at all um, connect with cognitively if you are, you know, in- interacting with that man online and discussing these problems. So um, I think it's it's led to uh, a lot of people falling for these narratives, whereas if they were, were allowed to form their opinions on this in real life purely, I think it would, trans activists would not have gotten this far. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I totally agree. The whole, I noticed it really early on, the whole absence of the paralinguistic um, features that, you know, go along with just talking to a person that you can tell immediately if they feel, you know, how they, how they feel, how, what they're thinking by looking at them, by looking at their body, it's all missing. Um, yeah, and it, yeah. It's been an adjustment um, for those of us that were, around um, before the internet. 